Now is the time to jump on the wagon and start flying FPV drones. Because let's face it, FPV is blowing up. But if you start FPV primarily to do epic cinematic videos, don't expect to get good shots for at least a few weeks at first, or more realistically for a few months. Be aware that you will need to invest time and effort and stay really patient if you want to master FPV because it is completely different from flying a regular commercial drone. And in this video, we will do a quick overview in what I believe is the best way to start FPV. It's how I did it successfully, and today I work as a professional cinematic FPV drone pilot. If this is your first time on this channel, welcome. It's really good to see you here. And on this channel, what we do is talk about cinematic FPV and filmmaking. So if this is something that you're interested in, consider subscribing. So how to start flying FPV drones? Well. First, I recommend you get a remote controller and practice flying in a simulator. Trust me, the first day is going to be a frustrating experience. Learning FPV will teach you how to stay patient. And the skills you need to learn before your first real-world flight are hovering. Very important, FPV is not like a commercial DJI drone that hovers by itself if you release the sticks. When flying FPV, you are constantly working, constantly doing micro-adjustments. Next skill is landing and turning off the drone, or as we say it, disarming the quad. A common beginner mistake is that you try to land and the drone just keeps bouncing and smashing into the ground because you didn't practice how to turn it off in a simulator. Next is flying slow with control while maintaining the same height. A common mistake is to just go and explode, go high up in the air and then struggle to bring the drone back down safely and also learn how to do basic turns while again maintaining the same height. It's, you will see it's all about the throttle management. Please master at least these basic skills in the simulator first and practice for a few days before attempting your first real-world flight under pressure full of adrenaline. Again, simulator for these first few days. Or don't listen, crash the drone and cry after. As you practice in the simulator, your next step is to create a shopping list based on your current budget and also make sure to have enough money left for spare parts because you will crash and things will break or burn out and you will need to replace them. And you know, that is the whole beauty of having an FPV drone because every part is replaceable. Now to quickly show you what you will need in general. So the controller you already have, you are already practicing in a simulator. So the next thing you need for real-world flying are goggles, either analog or digital system. And no worries, we will discuss it in a second, you know, the differences between them. Uh, and then of course you need a drone. I would get both Cinewoop and a racing quad. They are different tools for different styles of flying. And for more info, you can go check out this video. Next, you need batteries, a charger, a LiPo bag for safely storing the batteries, a backpack or a case to safely carry around your gear, and also a repair kit. You know, things like soldering iron, screwdrivers, stuff like that. And as I already mentioned, a lot of spare parts, especially props. Additionally, you can also get a GoPro mount and a GoPro, but leave the GoPro off until you feel comfortable flying, because in case you crash and break that GoPro, your wallet will cry. And mine cried two times already. Tough times. Rest in peace, GoPro. So to answer if you should go analog or digital, well, I'm planning to talk about it in depth in a separate video that I will link here when finished. But to answer shortly, analog is what pilots have been using for years. And the biggest advantage it has over the digital is a super low latency, meaning how fast the image is transmitted into your goggles from the drone. But with recent updates, digital has actually really stepped up the game and it's almost at the same level as analog. So unless you're planning to do professional FPV drone racing, you probably won't notice the difference. So whatever route you choose to go as someone who is just starting out, both systems are okay. Both systems have pros and cons. I fly both and I will continue to fly both for now. You know, analog is cheaper, so if you're on a tight budget, just go with analog. But keep in mind that you will get what you pay for. And what I mean by that is that if you eventually want to fly long range, you will need to invest some money. For example, I have a crossfire receiver, a really strong VTX video transmitter, rapid fire extension on my goggles with strong antennas, and also a long range antenna on my drone. At the end, you get pretty close to digital FPV with expenses. Uh, if I'm upgrading so much. So why is digital more expensive, you ask? Well, because of a much better visual experience. 
Here's a comparison with what I see through analog goggles and keep in mind that this is with the whole rapid fire upgrade included and uh, well to be honest it looks a bit better in goggles than it looks on the computer and yeah here is the image that I see through digital goggles much better. The latest updates really improved the range and image quality of the digital, so you really can't go wrong with the digital. But yeah, I don't want to make this video too, too long, so let's move on to the next topic. Another thing we need to talk about regarding gear is whether you should build one from scratch or buy a ready-to-fly drone. And to answer shortly, if you are not a technical type of a person and you don't enjoy researching about the whole technical aspect of FPV, just, you know, you just want to go get up in the air and fly and enjoy, just get the BNF quad. There are a lot of pre-built options out there. The ones that I fly are the iFly drones, very durable with a good tune straight out of the box. And no matter what brand you choose, just keep in mind that eventually things will break and eventually you will at least need to learn the basics of the technical aspect. So what I highly recommend is that you find a mentor that will teach you how to take care of your drones. Even binding and assembling everything together can be a very, very frustrating experience for a beginner. You know, FPV is just not a simple plug and play and I don't want to scare you, but that's just the way how it is. The barrier is for the entrance into the FPV world is high, but at the end, the patience is highly rewarded. To share my experience, I started flying FPV primarily to expand my filmmaking skill, have something uh, else to offer to my clients, but now I often just go and fly for fun because I really enjoy when I'm in the zone, turning off the whole external world, forget all about the problems and everything and just enjoy flying, be free like a bird, or how should I say? A few very important tips I want to give you before we end this video are don't practice in the self-level mode, go straight to acro mode in the simulator and just put hours into practice, just, just do it. Next is to connect with locals who already fly FPV and watch how they fly through your goggles. This alone is the golden nugget tip, trust me. Watching others how to fly is how you will progress much faster. Number three, continue to practice in a simulator, uh, especially when trying out new skills. Even today, I still practice in a simulator. Number four, LiPo batteries. Again, this is a broad topic, so please do the research about the batteries. I don't want you to burn down your house. So seriously, do the research about which batteries to get, how to safely store them, and how to safely charge or discharge them. Uh, what else, what else, is it four or five or... Yeah, field charging. So yeah, having a field, the option for field charging is a must if you're planning to do this professionally. Because flight times are short, let's say around five minutes, really depends from uh, how you fly. Next, uh, my camera angle on Cinewoop is around 10 uh, degrees and on Racing Quad I keep it between 20 to 45 degrees. Just depends on how fast I'm planning to fly and what am I filming. So yeah, try to, next tip, uh, pre-plan your flights before taking off to get the most out of it. Uh, so especially if you're doing cinematic FPV, also try to communicate with your subjects about what kind of shots you want to get. And I think overall this is basically it. I am aware that you probably have a lot more questions left, so just feel free to comment below this video uh, and I will do my best to help you out. Thank you for staying with me till the end and guess what? I will see you in the next video.